Hi, I'm Shannon from houseimprovements.com and today I want to show you how I would install an overhead garage door. So we've got an example here because I've already installed this one. Uh, basically what we have in this case is a 10 foot wide by 8 foot high uh, four panel door. Okay, we've also got some windows in it as you see but that's, that's just an extra feature. Yours may not necessarily have that. Um, uh, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to go right through the steps. Uh, I purchased the whole package. Uh, it is a, a custom size. Typically in a garage you're either going to have 16 wide by 7 high usually or uh, 9 wide by 7 high. Uh, we're, we're extended height here because we're in a, a building that has 10 foot walls, or 9 foot walls actually. And uh, so we were able to get 8 foot doors in here. So uh, it doesn't really affect anything on the door installation. Uh, you just have to order the correct size door. So as you can see here behind me, uh, once I put it in, we've got the four panels. We've got four panels stacked together. They're all hinged together. We've got the rail system, which is bolted to the walls and then curves up and goes horizontally across and uh, supported at the ceiling. Uh, this particular one has an opener as well. So we're, what we're dealing with strictly in this video is just the actually, actual assembly of the door uh, and, and just getting it functioning on the wall. So uh, not to mention uh, the parts I already did, but uh, as well we've got, if you look across the top, there's a long rod that goes from side to side with the spring on it and uh, roller drums at the ends. Now those roller drums have a cable connected to them. You probably won't see that way over there but right here that goes all the way to the bottom of the door on both sides and as the door goes up that cable wraps around those those uh, drums now the spring itself is there to assist in the lift of the door whether you've got an opener or not you're going, going to need to have that spring there and it'll all come as a as a package when you order your door um, so um, I just thought I'd touch on that you definitely need the spring so I think uh, at this point we're just going to reposition and I'll show you how to start out. The first step basically is getting these panels uh, over to the opening, which our opening is over this direction, but uh, getting the panels, get the hinges on and up against the uh, opening itself before we can get the tracks going. So we'll just reposition and re be right back. Okay, so we've uh, got all our door panels right here, all stacked together. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is basically go through your panels. Usually they'll be uh, labeled or numbered or something somewhere on the panel, usually on the edge, uh, so that you know what order they go in. But uh, if they aren't, it's not that difficult to kind of just have a quick look, figure out. Usually the bottom one is going to have some kind of track like this that the weather strip will go into. So that's an easy one to generally decide where it goes. And usually all the panels will have a rubber gasket in the top. There's a kind of a groove here There's a, and a rubber gasket there. So that usually will indicate which is the top, but generally with looking them over and reading your instruction book that comes with, uh, you, can, you can pretty much figure it out, but get them all stacked in the order. You want the, uh, this top one that we're gonna work on first is the very bottom door, and then they'll be in order from there as they stack up the wall. So as well in the package, when you open it up, uh, we're gonna throw a little actually photo clip in here likely and it'll show you what everything looks like laying on the table but all, you're going to find all your parts um, on the very bottom panel you're going to need some kind of bracket it looks something like this a roller would go in here one of the rollers for the track eventually will go in here this will be mounted down on the bottom corner of the door it'll also have a, a loop or a, a, some kind of peg here for that cable that i was talking about that hooks around there and, and attaches to the door. So this bottom panel, we're gonna have a bracket on each corner at the bottom, something like this. And then we're gonna have a hinge at each corner that uh, again, the hinges are generally always marked, you know, one, two, three. So you can uh, easily identify which one is which because they aren't all the same. Like this is the first door. Um, and this, this one will be the one on the top of the second door. And the roller, so the roller in this one uh, would go here. The roller in the second one goes here. You can see how that, 
the rollers kind of step out as they go up the door and that's uh, that just assists in pulling the door away from the opening as it starts to open so there is a there is an order to these these hinges and they are generally quite clearly marked so you shouldn't uh, shouldn't be able to mess that up too too bad uh, now the other thing on this particular brand of doors they've got a reinforced strip galvanized strip here on the inside uh, on the outside edge and it's got a bunch of pre-punched holes in it for all kinds of different hardware I, I imagine uh, these holes once you once you take your piece of hardware that you're putting on you move it around to the general area where it should be you should find that the holes in this hardware line up with the holes in that hardware that's indicating that you're you've got it in the right spot same thing with this uh, as you move it around you'll find the right punched out hole uh, they'll generally come with some self tapping they will come with some kind of self tapping bolt like this so uh, get your get your hardware lined up where you need it to be don't over tighten it these doors aren't super super uh, heavy metal or anything like that so uh, I'm not using an impactor I'm using just a, a standard uh, drill but yet I still want to be careful that I don't strip these out so I find the position I want put it into there get it all uh, screwed in this one also there's a there's a hole right down here it won't be punched out on the side but this is nice heavy metal and this is where all the force on your door uh, for the uh, spring is is uh, going to be attached to so I like to put one of these bolts down in here right through this heavier galvanized metal that they have on there uh, so here's the hinge this remember this is the top inside of the first panel uh, I'm going to move that around your uh, roller location is generally right near the the joint of the door so that helps you also identify it should be uh, the edge of it will be out just close to flush to the edge of the door as well so identify which holes you need come on and uh, mount the bracket on there again this is the hinge bracket okay and I'll go to the other end of the door and do the exact same thing uh, this is this hinge isn't for this door um, now in most cases uh, there'll be some intermediate hinges as well depending on the width of your door it will depend on how many there's going to be those intermediate hinges you can see them here actually you can see this door comes with one just straight up the middle in every joint uh, I won't put those on until I have all the panels stacked up I just find it easier to do that so uh, we'll skip that one we'll go right to this end put this one on be sure you're getting the hinge the right direction according to the manufacturer's instructions the uh, bottom weather seal in the manufacturer's instructions um, kind of shows to put it in right now I actually usually wait until I have the door functional because uh, you'll see when I take this panel over and set it down on the concrete floor of the opening and I've got to level the door up before I get started I just find it easier if that rubber gasket isn't isn't in the way if I do have to level it up and I can easily slide it in afterwards so so I'll, I'm gonna leave that off it's up to you what you want to do okay so I've got that in there just gonna put this stuff out of the way now I think I, I spoke before these aluminum clad doors are uh, you know they're usually a pretty skin uh, thin skin of aluminum so they don't take a lot to mark them so just be careful you're not working on a, on the floor where there's stones or something underneath it because you're gonna find that you have some dents afterwards so I've just got this raised up on a couple saw horses the panels aren't terribly heavy for this size of door this is an insulated door <laughs> Um, you know I should talk about the opening a little bit I'm gonna set this out of the way just gonna talk briefly about the opening uh, also in the instructions for these doors it'll explain exactly how your opening should be framed and finished ready for the door 
Uh, so that's important. You, you obviously need that to be done first. So um, your basic framing for the door is, is going to be a, a standard. You're going to have uh, a header, obviously, up top. You can't see a lot of this because it's covered up with the inside trim that we need for the door, but uh, you're going to have a header. You're going to have a couple of uh, cripple studs on each side and then another stud going right up from top plate to bottom plate. That's the structure that you need to have in uh, no matter what kind of door it is. For the overhead door, uh, for mounting, then they like uh, so you have a nice surface to work with. You've got a two by six here on the flat, going right from the floor all the way to the ceiling. One on both sides. You also, across the top of the door right here, have another two by six that runs all the way across between the two vertical ones. And then above that, in the center of the door, you need a block of, uh, a solid block of wood for mounting hardware and those sorts of things too. So in this case, we used a piece of two by 12 that we had, and it's going right from this two by six all the way up to the top of the wall. Okay, so those are kind of uh, the bits and pieces you need on there before you can even mount any of this hardware. The other thing that I'm going to mention is that um, when you're planning your garage to frame, you know, to frame your, uh, frame your opening and that sort of thing, I'm just gonna get back here out of the sun a little bit is uh, if your door, if you want a, an eight by, or sorry, a, a 10 foot wide by eight foot high door like what we have here, your actual finished opening should be 10 foot wide by eight foot high. Okay, so whatever your door size is, that's your opening, your finished opening size. In my case, I usually like to frame that just a little bit narrower, like even a quarter of an inch, and you'll see why here in a minute so uh, that when we lean our panels in there to set the door up, they don't fall through the opening. Um, in this case, I, I actually did frame this building and I framed the opening a little bit too wide. So what I did uh, off camera is I nailed on these little temporary strips right here to just narrow up the door opening until we get the door panels all standing in there and everything and uh, it gives something for the door to lean against. Okay, so uh, as I was saying, your door opening will be the same size as your door or slightly less if, if uh, you, you want it that way. Okay, so I think uh, we've touched everything there. I'm gonna take the panel now like I started to and set it in the opening. Oh, something I forgot to do was put the rollers in it. Let me just grab those. The rollers, usually there's no difference in the rollers themselves. It's the hinges that are different. So the rollers are all a standard size that I've ever seen. And uh, so it doesn't matter which spot you put them in. They just all need to be in there. So I'm just going to slide those in right now. You could put them in after. You can see I've got a bit of a grade beam in the way here, so I, I can't get the bottom one in after. So I needed to get it in right now. And I'm just moving the door right up against those strips that I added. And I'm just double checking that I'm basically centered in the opening. Equal amount, just like so. And uh, now the next thing I'm gonna do, I've got that pushed right back against this wood. I'm gonna take a, just a standard three inch framing nail. I'm gonna nail it into that wood right beside the door little bit and I'm gonna just bend it over just like that whoops that one didn't. because I made my door a little opening a little narrow it's okay so I'm just gonna bend that nail over that's gonna hold that panel there otherwise the wind or just gravity is gonna take over and it's gonna fall out okay so same thing Okay, just bend them over, double check that it's uh, still centered in your opening. Yeah, it's good, adjust it if you need to. But that'll just keep that panel there from falling over and we're gonna do that on every panel too, to hold them. Uh, flip this hinge down out of your way so that when you carry the next one in and set it on there, it's, uh, the hinge isn't gonna be in your way. Okay, so we've got that sitting there. I'm just gonna check that the door's sitting level. 
and actually it's it's fine right there it's slightly low there but not enough to worry about uh, if it's less than a 16th or less than an eighth even out of level from one end to the other then you're you're plenty good the bubble was barely even off center there so i'm going to leave that we're going to go to the next panel and put the hinges on it okay so here's my next panel i had all these panels sitting so that the bottom edge is to this side where i'm working from so i don't get myself mixed up now all th this next two subsequent panels all they need is the two corner hinges at the top so this is panel number two i'm grabbing the number two hinges and uh, same thing again make sure you've got them orientated right uh, according to the manufacturer's instructions so that the uh, the hole for the uh, roller is in the either up or down position whichever way your manufacturer wants them and again this is similar we just want to bring it up get it matched up to the uh, holes that correspond with the ones in the bracket and pop the bolts in i'll just do the same thing on both ends okay so same thing now now i'm going to take this panel and lift it up and i'm just going to set it right on that other one carefully get it lined up so it's even with the last panel that you did just like that and I'm going to use a nail again now the doors uh, the edges of the doors are a little bit uh, I don't know what the right word is they're, they're they kind of fit together they don't really lock together but they fit together so the, the bottom will usually sit there without any problem. It's just the top that you need to throw the nail in. And I'll just uh, screw the other hinges up to that. And that'll help secure it again. Okay, so all I've got to do is rotate that up. It should correspond to some of those holes. like so oops wrong screw okay and uh, I'm just gonna keep working my way up uh, the next panel is exactly the same as the last one um, other than it has windows in but that doesn't affect anything we're doing get in there okay so I'll throw the hinges on the next door so these will be uh, hinges number three okay so this uh, this door here is just like the last one we just have top hinges so I'm just gonna put these hinges on Put the door up in place and uh, we'll come back when I'm going to do the last panel. We're down to the, the uh, very top panel right now. I'm at the top edge of the panel. There's a slightly different bracket that goes on here. This bracket goes on and then it has an adjustable uh, sliding piece for the, uh, for the roller. So that's the only difference on these panels. Um, this bracket here read your instruction manual but uh, for this manufacturer they wanted it approximately four inches down from the top I get to about four and an eighth and it all lines up nicely with their holes so that's where I'm going to put it so uh, that's that's the main difference here I'm going to mount this on I'll do this one end completely it's pretty self-explanatory once you see it but I'll do this one end and then uh, when we come back I'll already have the panel up in place now one thing let me I'll, I'll, just, I'll finish this before I get you too confused with anything else okay I'm going to there's a uh, two different holes here I'm just gonna see I can tell which one I used last time so I don't have to waste a bunch of time it looks like I used the top one 
So this bracket just fits through a slotted hole, the nut and a bolt. I really should have just put it on there before I bolted it to the door. It would have been easier to do. Now, I actually, I brought a wrench over, but I'm not gonna tighten it right now because uh, I, I'll need to adjust that afterwards. Okay, so you do the same thing on both ends, okay? Uh, something I'm going to just talk about for a quick second because uh, if you're doing a, using a wider door, um, generally once they get over 12 feet, most man manufacturers will have a reinforcing strip or bracket that will go across the top of the door to give it a little extra strength. Um, this door doesn't come with that because of the width, it doesn't require it. There's a couple different styles. Some are just like an angle iron kind of bracket that'll be probably cut to length that just gets bolted right or screwed right through, right across the top at whatever position your manufacturer asks for. Some will have a flat strap and each end will have a screw hole so it gets screwed in there and there's a bracket, usually two of them, that go into the door. And that bracket has a little teeter-totter deal that you just push into position to tighten up that, that strap. So anyways, just watch for that if you're doing a wider door. That'd be the only thing different that you're gonna see compared to what we've done here. So I'm gonna go to that end, put that roller bracket on, and then I'm gonna throw the door in place. And uh, when we come back, I will have all the hinges all screwed on and we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, so we've got our upper, upper panel in place and uh, screwed on with the hinges. We've also gone ahead and put in the very top and bottom center hinge. I'm gonna show you on, the, on this one that's easy to reach, uh, basically what I did. So you wanna just measure over, find the center of the door, put a pencil mark, and uh, then line up the joint in the hinge here with the seam in the door. And I'm just using the same screws that I did to uh, put the other hinges all on. So I don't have a magnetic end, so this is a little tricky. Okay, so just get the hinge straight, throw in another screw. So like I said earlier in the video, some doors might have a couple of these hinges at each joint, so then just measure them out equally or however you decide to do it. Okay, so we've got the center hinges in, and uh, now the next step is we wanna get the uh, side rails on. So I'm gonna completely do one side, so you can see uh, how that's done, and then that way, uh, basically just do the same thing on the other side. We'll do that off camera just to save a bit of, bit of time here. So um, what you're going to have, we'll just look at this door here quickly. Um, you're going to have a, a vertical rail, which is going to be just straight like this. Okay. It won't come with these brackets on there. The brackets and the bolts and everything will be in the bag. Uh, I've just kind of got them semi-attached on there to speed things up. So we're going to basically install this, this upper rail first. And then uh, from there, we're gonna install this bracket with a bearing and, uh, and rod holder, and then that upper curved rail that you see there. Okay, so we've got all our rollers in the door, like so. Uh, we've got our track. You wanna position the track so that you're gonna, you're gonna see there's a flat side here and then kind of a slightly rounded side here. You want the flat side towards the wall. So all your brackets are going to get mounted on so that they will go that way as well. This would be the wall here. Okay. These are adjustable. So I've just got everything loose right now so we can adjust it in and out. This bracket's slightly different because it helps connect the uh, upper rails and stuff. You'll see when we get to that. Um, so once you've got your hardware just kind of loose on there, what you want to do is uh, get this all around your rollers. Okay, so usually by going in on a bit of an angle, it'll just uh, fit right around those rollers there. And we've already got the door basically centered there. So what, what you want to do is these rollers have a, a bit of a lip on them that prevents them from sliding too far in past this bracket. 
So we just want to create just a, just a fraction of space there, you know, basically an eighth of an inch, just to give it a little bit of wiggle room in the track. And that will uh, position our track over to where we, where we want it. So in this case, I want it right about here. I'll just take it out just a bit more. So your hardware, again, it'll come with all these, the right bolts and, and uh, leg bolts and things to mount all this. So I'm just gonna insert this leg bolt. It's a slotted hole in the bracket. So I'm gonna put the bolt right in the center. So if we have to do some adjusting after, I can go, I can go one way or the other. So um, before I do this, I think we're just gonna change camera angle. My camera guy's giving me the signal. So. We just need to get our spacing here nice. Like I said, about an eighth of an inch. Uh, we had a bit of a technical difficulty with the camera. So we've actually taken this off. That's why you're gonna see that this bolt has already been in there. So uh, place the leg bolt in the center of that slotted hole in the bracket. Fasten it in there. I'm a little tight. Want to have a little bit of movement down there. Um, and uh, yeah, anyways, we don't have to be perfect just yet. If we have to adjust it, that's why the, the hole there is slotted. So as we move up the door, we've got another bracket here. And uh, the instructions from your manufacturer will tell you exactly where to place those brackets on the actual rails. So I won't get into that. Uh, so we're up here. Again, I want to make sure you can see these little um, little flanges on that wheel that keep it from being able to slide in too far. I just want to make sure they have a little bit of movement there, a little bit of play. And I'm going to center that, uh, put this in the center of that slotted hole again. Okay. So we've got that in there. These other bolts right now that attach the brackets to the rails are just loose. We'll tighten those up as uh, we move along here. That'll be a little bit later along. Um, I've gone ahead and uh, attached, excuse me, attached this uh, upper angle iron that has that bearing uh, bracket on it right here. This is where the rod would go through, through this bearing. I've already loosely attached it here on the top of this rail. Now uh, what I want to do, come over to this side. I'm going to, uh, I want to get it on the wall straight in line with this uh, rail that we've already done. We're going to put the bolts in these slotted holes again. Okay, throw a uh, level on that angle iron just to be sure it's running straight. Okay, so we've got uh, that mounted to the wall. Again, this is just loose down here right now. Now we can actually set our, our upper curved bracket that uh, returns the door up along the ceiling up on top of there and get it uh, closely in position. Okay, so I've just taken this uh, hockey stick shaped piece of metal here, this track, and I'm just temporarily supporting it by some rope off the rafter close to plumb, or uh, sorry, close to level for right now. And then uh, I just slid it on over top of that roller there. So I'm gonna go back to this end at the door and put in one of these special bolts that they send for all this stuff. And I'll maybe uh, talk about those here in a second too. So you just wanna get uh, this face and this face of these two pieces of track so they're lining up nicely here. Actually, it's not real important right at this step, but eventually we need to get those right bang on. I'm pretty close there right now. I'm just gonna show you a little bit about these bolts that, the bolts that they send, at least this manufacturer, they have all these uh, little uh, grooves or knurls here. And what those do is they suck into the metal on the pieces as you tighten the nut up and uh, prevent it from turning. And I'll just show you how that is on here. So you can see I've got the bolt through the two pieces of metal, but it's still sticking out a bit uh, because of the, I just gotta get my drill in this other hand. So you can see how it's sticking out there a little bit, 
but as I tighten this knot, it starts to suck it right into the metal and it just uh, creates enough tension there that it doesn't spin. And then you just tighten it right up like that. So most of the uh, bolts you're seeing me use here on the actual tracks and this upper hardware is all this type of, type of bolt. Okay, so we've got that on. Uh, we now need a cross support for up top here. Now this piece, this piece here is going to uh, basically join from this bracket back here over to one of these holes here. So the first thing I do is I just get it loosely hanging here so that uh, it's easier to deal with. And that, you've seen that hole in that bracket up there is slotted, so I've got some play this way. I need to get it to the point where it uh, lines up with one of those two holes in this track. So I'm kind of just uh, feeling that out. It looks like this one here is gonna be the one. These special bolts I told you about, that flat head always goes inside of the tracks anytime they go through the track. So then when it sucks in, nothing's really in the way of the rollers. Okay, so I've just got that stuff all finger tight right now. Okay. So typically I would get to that point on both sides right now and then pull the nails here in the door that we use to, to uh, kind of hold the panels up. I don't have that side done just yet. In fact, I'm going to do that side off camera. So uh, I'm just going to pull the nails on this side. Just be careful not to dent your nice new door. And this will just give this end of the door, come on, a little bit of uh, free play here so we can adjust it. Okay, the other end still cinched with those bent over nails, so we should be all right there. Okay, so what uh, what we've got now is now we've got the uh, the door has a little bit of movement here, and as we start from bottom to top, we don't want the door right tight against that wood out out here. You can see you can actually see light coming in there right now. We're going to put a rubber weather strip around that anyways. So it's, it's not necessarily necessary that it has to be right tight there. We just want it, you know, within reason, you know, an eighth inch or less. Um, if you get it too tight, it causes the door to bind against the wood and uh, just uh, makes it harder to operate. So we're just going to start out. Oh, I must have this bracket tightened up already. It wasn't real tight, but there's a bit of tension on it. I'm just going to start out at the very bottom. We're going to slide this in till we're happy with the, uh, to the, with the space there, and then we can tighten that up. Okay, just like that. We're just gonna work our way along at every bracket and uh, just try to maintain that little bit, of, little bit of play there. That's part of the reason that these Hinges, as I pointed out, are kind of stepped out where the roller position is. So that as the door rolls up, it, it pulls the door away from the, uh, from the track a little bit more. Okay, that one's, that one's good there. We'll go up to that upper bracket. Now on this one, we've got adjustment here and as well, we have some adjustment here. So this one, we really can't move too much now, right? Because we've We've already tightened it in two points. So this really isn't going to move. So that's, that's its home. And go ahead and tighten it right up. This curved piece, this is where we want to get it lined up to the lower one. So we just need to kind of slide everything back to where nice there and we can tighten that bolt up. Just like so. All right, so we've got that all on there. Now I'm gonna go up, I wanna throw a level on this and uh, get that nice and plumb before we tighten this bracket here. Otherwise, it's, we're gonna be fighting against it. 
So to do that, we've actually got to add uh, some blocking up there to one support the door um, track. So when the door's rolled up and the weight's up there, it isn't, doesn't come crashing down. And then we're going to put a piece of angled bracket on there to keep that track from wanting to go all over the place. Just like, uh, I don't know if you can see from that angle. Uh, I'll show you here in a minute. But anyways, I've got to cut a piece of block of wood. Basically, what I do is I've already got a piece. I've already got a piece right here. Okay, to attach to up in the rafters. So what I need now is a piece that, of two by four that'll hang attached from there hang down actually on this side of the track in a position where one of these holes here uh, can be bolted through to that piece of wood and that'll just take that weight. So um, I'm going to cut that piece of wood and get it in place and uh, get the angle bracket on. Then I'll just come back and kind of explain it. Okay. So I've come back up here. I put my level on the upper part of this track and I just want to get it level. So then I have just adjusted this rope. We're kind of already attached down there. So that end can't really go up or down. So I just adjusted my uh, rope system here to uh, get myself till the, uh, the bubble is uh, level there. Now I'm going to go back over to that side. So now that we have that, we know that that's level, we're good here. We can actually tighten these bolts up and that'll help support, like give some uh, stability to this track right here. So I'll tighten this one. And tighten this one. I'm just going to put my safety glasses on in case any pieces of metal come down. Like so. So that just gives that a little bit more strength there. We've got, I'm just double checking, I've got all these bolts tight now. So we've got this side all hanging nicely. Okay. So I think, uh, you know, really it's just the same thing on the other side. I'm going to do that side off camera. And then when we come back, uh, I'll be able to start dealing with the, uh, the big rod that goes across and the cables and the spring and all that kind of jazz. So, Okay, so we've got the rail up on both sides of the frame here now. And uh, like I said, I just kind of did that one side completely for, so that you could see how it was done and the other side is, is a mirror image of it. Uh, something else that, uh, a couple other things that I did off camera is uh, up here you'll see We've got a wood block attached up into the ceiling and uh, this block is then, or the, the track, I mean, is, sorry, is screwed through to the block and that's just holding the weight of the door when the door is up. We will be putting an angle brace on here as well afterwards. So you'll see us do that just to keep the track from swaying side to side. Also, I added a bolt and a couple nuts on the very end of the track here. And that just allows that if for some reason the door opened higher than it should, it would uh, hit onto those bolts and the roller wouldn't come out of the end of the track. Uh, we've got all our, all our hardware and everything tightened up from the floor up through all this bracing area. Uh, the only thing I have left to do actually, now that I look at it, is I've got to tighten and adjust this upper bracket here. So again, I'm just pulling the door in or out to get, leave a little bit of a space against the wood and then I'll tighten up that bolt that we put through that bracket on both sides. So we'll get that done. And then uh, the point I'm at is putting up the rod that holds the, uh, holds the stupid wasp bothering me. <laughs> it holds the spring mechanism here. And it also holds the two, two outer uh, drums, cable drums. So, so I'm just going to uh, tighten those brackets up up top and then we'll insert this uh, shaft into place. Okay, just a couple of points about uh, the assembly of this, all this stuff, because it obviously doesn't come all put together. Um, for one thing, your spring mechanism, this bracket here with the bearing in it comes separately. So you've just got to slide it all on the, uh, on the shaft and bolt, put these two bolts through it. Not a big deal. Uh, in your manual, it will tell you which side of that bearing um, the spring needs to be on. Otherwise, if you get it on the wrong side, it's, it's just not going to function properly. In this case, with this manufacturer, they say if your spring has got a red spray painted area on it, which on this end it does, it needs to be to the left hand side of that bracket. 
So uh, we've got that on the bar the right way. And right now this just just completely slides on there. It's, it's not fixed in place yet. Uh, these drums, same thing. This one has red spray paint on it here. It's the left side, the other one's black, it's the right side. They, they even have an L and an R on them, so that's not a big deal. So those just simply slide on there. Don't tighten anything up yet at this point. So I'm gonna take this bracket up there and uh, first off, put the shaft through each bearing at each end so that it sits there and try to get about equal amount so that it's not gonna fall out. And then I've got a center line marked here of the opening. I'm gonna mount that bracket that the spring is attached to just off center here, three or four inches so that uh, it's out of the way for any future door opener or anything like that. Um, also, uh, I've, I can determine the height of that bracket. You don't want that pipe to be bent or have an arch in it. So what I did is I, uh, I actually snapped a line. You can see it right here. There's a line here, it's actually level, equal distance off the floor right across. So what I can do uh, is I measure down from that line to center a hole on those brackets. And uh, same thing there, I want that, then I know where the center of that hole is. So it's just a matter of a little bit of measuring and you know where you have to be. So I'm just gonna get that all ready and then uh, you'll see me up there. Okay, so just get it sitting in there. Just have a quick look, or if you have somebody helping you, they can have a look and tell you if it's close to equal. You just don't want it so close to one end that it's gonna fall out of there. While you're working, I can go just a little bit to my left. Okay, so now I've got that shaft in the right spot. I'm gonna move this um, bearing bracket over. I've got my mark, like I said, up here that references the top of this bracket to get the center of my pipe the same here as it is on both ends. And I'm just gonna pre-drill a hole through my wooden blocks. Actually, that something, uh, something isn't quite computing there. I'm just gonna recheck my calculations. Okay, so I just had my uh, reference Reference mark out of place there. Uh, I could tell as soon as I started to lift on that that I was going to be too high. I need to be right there. So I'm going to pre drill this. Let's get a couple points. And then I can move this out of the way. Pre drill right through there. To get the shaft back in there. And again, these leg bolts all come with the, with the whole system. So uh, I'll, I'll uh, just get my bracket mounted and then I'll double check that shaft. So I might be a little bit out now that I moved it. Okay, I've just got one in. I'm just gonna make sure my shaft isn't coming out at one end or the other. I can go a little bit to the left again. Remember, we're not attached. Nothing is attached to that shaft yet, so it's, it just moves easy. Okay, so we've got that bearing uh, for the spring all solid there. I'm gonna get rid of a couple drills. And now what I need to do is uh, take your two cables. They attach down on the bottom corners of the door, feed it up behind all the rollers, and hook it onto uh, each one of the drums. all entangled here so I might as well start over here so there's no rocket science to this just uh, drop it back there and hook it onto that little uh, knob on the end of that bottom bracket if you remember back when I installed those takes a little bit of 
monkeying around. It's pretty tight back there. There, I got that on there. Now I'm just going to take that up, feed it up behind all, make sure I'm behind all the, the rollers. You don't want to be in, don't want to be on this side. Don't want to be on this side of the rollers. Just make sure you're getting behind them. Okay, just like that. Just take a look down there, double check that you aren't. This cable needs to come up on the back side of this cable or this uh, drum. There's a little slot over on the outside edge. That cable hooks right in there and then you just feed it around that drum. There's kind of a groove there that it has to follow. Okay, so then uh, once you have it in the right groove, just put some good tension on that. I think I have the wrench here in my pocket. Just put some good tension on that cable so that it's tight there. And uh, there's two set screws here in the end. We're going to tighten both of those up. So we've got the cable tight. We're just going to tighten those both to the And we're pushed right out against that bearing bracket out there too. Okay, so I just got those two there. We're going to go do the same thing on the other side. Come on, there we go. And I think you can see it, my ladder's right there. Same thing we just did. Anyways. Okay, get my cable up around the back side, find this slot, get that cable in the right groove on there. Okay, and I want to be sure that my uh, other side is tight too. Now before I tighten this one, actually it's probably going to fall off of there. Before I tighten this one, what I want to do is take a, lock, a set of locking vice grips. And I'm going to turn the shaft until that cable down there becomes really taut again. And I'm going to clamp the vice grips on onto this pipe and so that they're uh, up against the uh, header of the wall here or a stud or something. So they can't... What the heck's going on here? I thought I had these all sized, but I didn't. That's probably going to be good. Okay, so again, I'm twisting on the shaft, getting that cable as taut as I can. And then I want to get those pliers on there so it's holding that shaft from turning and keeping that cable from coming loose. Okay, I've got this wrapped around this side. Now I want to just pull it tight, get the tension up out of it and tighten these two. So the idea is you want equal amount of pressure on both of those cables. So the door pulls up evenly. Okay, so we got those. We got the tension on the cable. Now it's time to the uh, for the most uh, dangerous part of the whole installation. Okay, so we've got our two drums keeping our shaft from sliding in or out. We've got our center bearing attached and uh, now we're ready to wind the spring. Now the thing with this spring is it can, it can change from manufacturer to manufacturer and it can change depending on which side of the bearing you have it on. So the main thing to remember is when you're winding it, you want the spring to be get wound in a way that it'll be getting longer and smaller around in distance. Then you know you're turning it the right way. Um, something else you could look at, if you look here, you can see the end of the spring. So this spring is wrapped basically as if it was wrapped around that pipe this direction, which would be counterclockwise. And I'm looking here at the end of the spring where they cut it off. Whichever way that's pointing, I want to turn this, the spring forward. So in this case, I want to turn it up 
if the end of this was facing down, then I'd be turning the spring down, okay? Uh, this is, as I mentioned before, this is the most dangerous thing about this whole installing this door because there's so much tension on these springs by the time you start getting them even a quarter of the way around, uh, wound. You want to be very sure that, uh, that you have everything solid, you got a good grip on everything. What you need is a couple pieces of bar. Uh, I use rebar that fit into these holes fairly, fairly snugly. Actually, sorry, I've got the uh, end ground just a bit so it fits in better. Um, and you need two of them because what you're going to do is insert whatever you're using in here, push it up, get the next one in, and you're just going to work your way around like that. Now, right now, it's really easy. Once we get, like I said, a quarter of the way through, there's a lot of pressure on there and you don't want one of these to slip out. Don't use a screwdriver or any kind of makeshift small item. Uh, like I said, I'm using 10M rebar. I had to slightly grind the end so it fits in there better. But you want to use something that's pretty, uh, you know, pretty substantial as far as uh, it's going to not bend on you. And I don't know what these are, maybe 16, 20 inches long. You don't want a much shorter than this or you don't have the leverage either. Now in your instruction manual, it will tell you how many uh, turns, revolutions you need to turn that spring to wind it properly. In this case, for this size of door and with this spring package and everything, we've got to go eight and a half full revolutions. So uh, it takes a little bit of time. Once you get it to that point where you've got your full revolutions, then you need to have your wrench handy because there's two of these set screws on here again that need to be tightened up, okay? So keep all this stuff right close by here handy because you don't want to, once you get this sprung, you don't want to have to unwind it manually to go and get one of these. Okay, so I like to keep my wrench right up here. Okay, so I like to keep my body and limbs and everything right out of the way of these as much as I can. This is, like I said, this is the most dangerous part. If you're not comfortable at all with what you see me doing here and don't think you can do it, then you should be calling a pro to, to come and do this job. Um, this, this can definitely injure you. Okay, so I'm gonna start by, uh, basically usually what I do is I, Make sure those are loose for one thing. And I just kind of get the spring sitting there nicely so it, I kind of, you know, it doesn't have really tension on it, but it isn't loose. And also at this point, I want to take a reference point to, you know, where my, where my full revolution is going to be. So at this point, the way this spring's sitting, I've got both my, my locking uh, bolts here straight up. So that's going to be what I'm going to call my zero position. So once I turn them around and get them back to there, that's one revolution. So you need a reference so you can kind of keep track. Cause like I said, once you start doing this, you don't want to be stopping to mess with anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and start and uh, just get this, just get this wound right around. I've never seen it happen, but I would hate for one of these springs to break. So I'm going to put my safety glasses on as well. I've seen them break once they're older just from over, from being used but not when winding it okay so there's two revolutions right now there's three there's already a fairly good amount of pressure on there you can see if I wanted to let go that would just take right off There's four. Even my cameraman's counting, keeping track for me because with all my blabbering here, I might lose track of where I'm at. Right, cameraman? There's five. That's six right there. And again, just make sure you're pushing these, these uh, dowels or whatever you're using to do this right into the hole so you're, you're getting good good amount of that in there. slip out. So there's six, right cameraman? Seven. See, I lost track with all my talking. I knew I would. So I'm coming around for my eighth full revolution, which is right there. Well, almost right there. That's eight. I needed eight and a half, so I need those to be pointing down. So we're coming around. Got lots of tension on that right now. 
I'm going to get rid of one bar. I've got that one in there, seated in there really firmly. Now, because of the position of it, for safety's sake, I'm going to put my shoulder right under that bar. I can't, I can't slip out of my hand or anything. And I'm going to tighten these up. Now basically, what they recommend is once you can feel that this uh, bolt, set bolt, set screw, has made contact with the shaft, you want one full revolution after that to ensure that it's in there enough. Okay, so now I've got that in there. I still haven't really taken a hand, my hand off of that bar. I usually put one, put my second one back in when I'm going to release it just to be sure I've got kind of a little bit extra back up there in case, in case something malfunctions. Okay, so we've got that all set. We've got those tight. We hopefully won't have to touch it again. Now I've got to go down. I've got to remove those locking pliers that we had on there. And then uh, with any luck at all, I should be able to uh, go down and actually lift this door by hand. So now it should lift fairly easily. Uh, we've pulled, make sure you pull all your bent over nails out. Uh, you don't want any of them in the way protruding where the door will get caught on that. We should be able to lift the door without really much effort at all. There should be some effort, but not, not a whole lot. The spring is there to assist in the lift, even if you're using a, a door opener. Okay, so that opens up pretty nicely. I thought I heard something kind of catch a little bit when I first lifted it over on this one side. Oh yes, there we go. Right down there I've got one of those nuts that I must not have tightened completely. Uh, what size was that? Yeah, it's this size. So I'm going to just tighten that up. It's just sticking out into the track so the roller was catching on it. Actually, you know, when I did the second side, I guess I didn't, didn't tighten those up. Those upper ones I got, that's all good. Somehow I missed that one there. So let's see, we shouldn't hear anything catching on anything now again. Yes, it just operates really nice and smoothly. Okay, so now we've got the door open. Uh, hopefully that sunlight isn't totally blinding you in the picture right now. Uh, what I need to do now is just kind of look here. I'm going to grab my tape. If I just have a look right up here at the uh, roller, you can see how that uh, door wants to keep moving a little bit. Let me just push it all the way up. I can hardly reach it. You can see how the roller shaft is extending out of this bracket. Oh, I don't know, maybe three eighths of an inch. Okay, so uh, we just need to uh, put an angle bracket on here. I'll show you how to do that. It goes across here and that'll just keep the track from moving in and out because you don't want that roller to come out. I'm just looking at this side to see what we got here. This side, it's not quite as much. I generally like to see around a quarter of an inch to half an inch of play in there at the very uh, end of these tracks up at the top. That way your door isn't isn't uh, binding when you open it right up. So I'm just going to get uh, some ladders set up and I'll put the braces on up there. Okay, so like I said, we're going to put an angled brace on there. Your uh, garage door will come with a few pieces of this uh, angle iron that's punched full of holes and of course the, the uh, leg bolts we've been using. So I'm going to simply attach this through this wooden bracket that I dropped down and up there you could, they send you enough that you could actually do these verticals with this metal as well. I just prefer using the wood uh, for this and then the metal for this one. So I'm going to get, uh, hopefully organized here, get this in place. You may have to cut your, this metal shorter or whatever to work for your situation. Kind of doing this really awkwardly. 
Well, I'm going to put this one in. So these are just giving some rigidity to this piece so that your track stays uh, in line where you're wanting it to. I'll throw another bolt up here. Now, if you, if you had a finished ceiling already, say it's drywalled or plywooded or whatever, you may actually have to, uh, you know, basically use three of these. So you'd have one mounted across the ceiling up against your finished ceiling that's actually attached directly into the rafters. So, you know, you have to find your rafters and make sure that you can get a bolt into each one. So that would be horizontally right against the ceiling. Then you would drop another one down from it to attach here to hold the weight. And then a third one across on the, on the angle to uh, pick that all up. Again, you could do that with wood. Some of those pieces could be used, could be wood too. So, uh, but if you have a finished ceiling in this case, obviously we don't, but if you do, that's what you need to do. Just be sure it's attached not just through the drywall or plywood, it's got to be into some solid wood. So, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, I almost forgot about the weather stripping on the bottom of the door and the, and the outside too. Uh, we've just opened the door up. I just clamped these pliers on here to keep the door from wanting to go all the way up. We're going to put the bottom weather strip on and it'll, it comes with the door. You can get replacements of these as well. So uh, this particular one just is a big roll. Uh, you basically pinch it in half and you can see it's kind of got a T, T edge on, on both top edges there and they slide into this plastic channel that's already on the bottom of the door. So it's just a matter of getting it in there and started like so, kind of keeping it pinched. That goes on really good for the first couple feet just like that with one person. Uh, after that, you kind of need a second person to kind of keep guiding it in here at this end while the other one pulls it that way. So, so that's really all there is to that. Actually, it looks like uh, this track, usually it's already screwed to the bottom of the door, but this plastic track must not be. So I'll just have to uh, pull this back out and I'll put about four different screws in, just small little uh, like number six um, flathead screws. And they'll go up in one of these tracks into the door just to keep this from sliding around. Usually it's attached, but it wasn't in this case. Okay, so we covered that. We're just going to pop right outside to the door that's already complete. And I'll just go over the uh, weather stripping for you so you can see how it fits. Okay, so our weather strip is right here. It's got a rubber lip on it and then this piece of metal here. Uh, they're going to come in uh, a little bit oversized length, so you're going to have to cut it. So what I do is I run my upper one. I cut it the same size as the opening, maybe an eighth of an inch less, and I, I'll fasten it on. You just want to push it up against the door so the rubber actually folds up and around kind of a little bit against the door. This way it gets a bit of a water and snow seal there. Um, so I put the upper one on, and then I have to kind of, depending on your weather strip, these can be all different, so I don't want to get too far into detail because yours could be totally different, but I had to not make a notch in this rib of the side ones so it fits up nice. My rubber overlaps the other one so you get a nice fit in the corner. Same thing, cut it basically to height and screw it on. You can screw it, nail it, whatever. I like to use screws but you can see I got a nice fit down to the bottom and everything so uh, not really rocket science and like I said I don't want to go into too much detail because yours could be totally different. But uh, whatever you've got there it should look similar to this and just uh, make it work. So. Okay, so uh, we've got the door completed. Uh, one thing I didn't, I forgot one more thing. Uh, on the outside of the panels, there will usually be some kind of pro uh, protective plastic film over it. Make sure you take that off. Uh, once that film sits in the hot sun for a few days, it just kind of bakes on there and it's darn near impossible to get off and it looks like, looks terrible. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So make sure you pull that film off. Um, We've got it all complete. We've got it operating really nice and smoothly. We've got the weather strip on the bottom. I'm just going to have to do the outside of this one. And uh, pretty happy with how it turned out. For the average person that's never done this before, expect that it's going to take you probably at least four to five hours by yourself. If you have some help, it might speed you up definitely a little bit. Uh, as you do a couple, you'll get a little quicker yet. But it's, it's going to take you half the day for sure. Plan on that. Uh, if it's a bigger door, you're definitely going to want some help. If it's higher, once you start getting much over, you know, 10 feet high, 
you might as well hire it out because uh, it just gets a little precarious using scaffold or ladders all the time. So, but for the average residential door, uh, it's not that big of a deal as you've seen other than that spring. It's the most dangerous thing you're going to deal with. So, so uh, anyways, uh, you've been watching our uh, how-to videos, I hope, um, on our YouTube channel here. If you haven't, please subscribe. Just click subscribe, there's no cost, there's no nothing, just do that. You'll get notified then that way every time we post a video. Uh, you can, once you're on our channel like you are here, you can go and view all our videos that we have up and uh, probably find out some information that uh, might help you on some of your DIY type projects. So other than that, we've also got the uh, uh, website as well, house-improvements.com. There you'll find lots of different articles and information as well. Uh, but the most important thing there is our forum. Um, if you have any questions about what you've seen here or anything else in general, please go to the forum and ask your question. Um, instead of posting it in the comments here, I'll be more sure to get back to you with a response if it's in the forum. So, um, we didn't do any extra locks or anything on this. I'm just going to mention that. If you aren't doing an opener on here, then you're going to want to buy a locking hardware and put it on. We're going to be doing an opener. Check out our video for that. Thanks again for watching.